Welcome to the Pulpish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today, we are here to discuss Our Lady of the Rosary. Also known as Our Lady of Victory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So, so this is this is the one, uh, the, the, the Battle of... Uh, Lepanto. Yeah, Lepanto. I knew it was Le Peu something. We have not actually researched this because I'm like, Mike, are you ready to do one on Our Lady of the Rosary? He's like, yeah, I'm ready now. <laughs> We're just going to make it up as we go. We'll probably get we'll probably get at least half right. Get 75% right. Well, see, I was at actually, least half. See, I was actually not going to propose doing one this year, but doing one next year on the big um, 550th anniversary. This year is just 549. Lame. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm sure our viewers will forget by then what we've done. Cause, Fair you know. enough. So, in the year 1453, the Roman Empire finally came to an end when the city of Constantinople was conquered by the Ottoman Empire. This is what gave the Sultan Mamet II the epithet, The Conqueror. I mean, it's pretty impressive if you take Constantinople, because yeah. nobody else had managed to do it, except for, you know... Except for a except whole bunch of uh, crusaders. Yep, and there's, and you know, the Greeks are still <laughs> mad about that. <laughs> Every single time. Every... Don't, don't mention the slaughter of the Latins. That didn't happen. <laughs> Those guys are not big on forgiveness. It's a, it's a problem. But, so in the 1400s, the Ottoman Empire was on the march, and there was a real possibility that the Mediterranean was going to become, essentially, an Ottoman lake. Mm. This would be very bad. Yes. Yes, because they're they're covered in, in, in you know, cloth, and, and they don't really flow, and, you know, that's going to be way too far away from your chair at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Ottoman, honey. <laughs> no, but it, but it was delightful that when the Armchair Catholic was going, that their highest tier of their Patreon was the Ottoman Empire to go with their armchairs. Ah. Ah. I, I would be discouraged from... from Donating at that level because that is well, that's not Catholic. That's Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because they they meant they put your feet up Ottoman. Oh, okay. <laughs> they want an empire of relaxation. Mm. Plus, that was like fifty bucks a month. That was a ridiculous tier. Yeah, but anyway, we were discussing this giant battle and Catching. something about the rosary. So, <laughs> the Ottomans were on the advance, and the Pope was having a really hard time gathering forces. Because, well, Europe was spending a lot of time fighting amongst themselves. You know, yeah, things were awkward. So, yeah. in 1465, the Ottomans laid siege to Malta. And it lasted a full year. And they were defeated, but just barely. Six years later, they were wanted revenge. They were gathering an enormous fleet. And it fell to Di Popa. At that point, uh, St. Pius V. To organize the resistance. So, he got Venice. That's a good... It's yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good solid. They, they got lots of, but they often don't play well with others. No, that is true. Mm, yeah. But in this case, the Ottomans were putting a crimp on their trade, and nothing was more important to the Venetians than their trade. Yeah. yeah so if they, they were... If they uh, left us the Mediterranean, mm-hmm. they'd be quite upset. Exactly. <laughs> and um, a, I believe, illegitimate Spanish prince. Okay. Known as Don Juan of Austria. Don Juan, because you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of connectivity between the Austrians and the Spanish at that time. Yeah, mm-hmm. history is really weird. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's so, like the, the Spanish Empire that includes the Netherlands, the, mm-hmm. nothing in between. It seems. <laughs> well, one day we could talk about Burgundy and just what a mess that was. But all the, the royal lines. But this, the, but this is this is a Catholic <laughs> show, a Catholic YouTube channel, not a history show. So that's right. <laughs> Spain, the Ottoman Empire, the um. Holy Roman Empire, France, none of them wanted any part. So, the Pope put together what fleet he could, and they sailed out to meet the Ottomans. Unfortunately, they were vastly, vastly outnumbered. And they were most likely toast. They were going to be badly defeated. You know, it was going to be a, a valiant defeat, but still, everybody would have died. Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't, they weren't weren't going to get routed and then retreat. They were, they were going to... It was... That, yeah, that's not the to way. the last man kind of a, kind of battling. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the last great battles with galleys, and those ships don't run away very well. No, no, and you know when you're on a boat, you, you kind of if your boat's down, everyone's down. I mean, yeah. you might you know survive, but you know. Well, and you know, <laughs> naval combat then was as much infantry fighting as it was anything else. Mm-hmm. So you know, when you're wearing armor because you're going to board somebody else's boat, and then you don't your boat sinks. So good, <laughs> but. The Christians had a secret weapon. It is the same secret weapon we always have. 
little old ladies praying the rosary. I, I was I was wondering, but yeah, mm-hmm. that that. Listen, that's our go-to move. I mean, at that time, it was a new move because this was still, you know, I don't even know exactly when Saint Dominic made it popular, because the, the early the early twelve hundreds. Yes. So. Yeah. It's been like 250 years. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, Which is mean, nothing in church time. So the rosary is still new and hip. <laughs> Which means the rad trads of back then were deeply suspicious of it. Oh, They're absolutely. like, I'm just going to say 150 Hail Marys with no meditations like we were meant to because we can't read the Psalter. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pope called on people to pray and to pray and then just for a change of pace to pray some more. And at the precise moment in the battle... When everything was about to go really, really bad for our side, all of a sudden, the wind changed. And instead of advantaging the Turks, it put them at a tremendous disadvantage. Don Juan and the Holy League fleet pressed their advantage, and, well, this, this next bit is, you know, not the Christian ideal, but they did a lot of fighting, and the, uh, the, the Ottomans did a lot of dying. Yeah. And the Ottoman fleet was... Utterly destroyed. Once again, when you are battling on ships in that era, way out in the deeps, mm. there's not really anywhere to run to. And uh, if, you're, if, if your ship gets seriously damaged, it, it's literally like the entire earth below you swallowing you up. Yes, and I'm fairly sure it would count under the, the some level of just war. Of course. Because, you know... You can't just talk to the Ottomans. Like, I'm sure they tried that many times. Okay, like, okay, okay, the they, Ottomans messengers were, were sent. They had <laughs> just conquered Constantinople. They were advancing everywhere. They, yes. they, they were they were unjust aggressors. <laughs> yes. No, it was 100% a defensive war on the part of the Holy League and Christendom. Yes. Absolutely. But nevertheless, we, we regret the slaughter, but you know, better than our side won. So, this amazing... You could, like, write every history book. Just be like... It was sad that many people died, but we won. We wrote this book, so yay. <laughs> it's, it's sad that so many people died, but it's less sad that they died than we did. So, hooray. Yes. That's the, that's the way history yes. works. Yep. Yes. We regret the loss of their life. We do. We do not regret our victory. <laughs> Boom. That's well said. So, huzzah! Europe was saved. At least temporarily. The Turks would be back. Yeah. The Turks were always back. Listen. They were super happy they won this time. Absolutely. And they were so happy that the very next year, when the first anniversary rolled around in 1572, the Pope declared it the Feast of Our Lady of Victory. In very short order, that was changed to Our Lady of the Rosary, because after all, it was asking for the intercession of Our Lady through praying the rosary that God had delivered the victory. And... Then the little then the little old church ladies really you know, want to make sure that you know things get named the way they want them to be named. So. Darn right. And so, if you ever wonder what is the power that sustains the world, it is little old ladies praying their rosaries. How the church, as mismanaged as she often has been down the centuries, how she keeps tottering along, old ladies with, praying with their the rosaries. rosaries yeah. How we are going to get out of the present mess that we are all in, the whole world? Little, little old, old ladies, ladies praying, praying their, their rosaries. rosaries. Don't worry, Jess. By the time you get to be a little old lady, we'll come up with something else you can do. Oh, okay. Either that or... <laughs> Maybe I that... could be one of the ones that are always lighting the candles in the church. There you yeah. go. Either They'll that... be praying their rosaries, you play with fire. Either that or <laughs> something will change within you and you will decide to drink the Kool-Aid and, and you know... Double down on the on the praying the rosary. One of us. One <laughs> of us. <laughs> so, today, remember, whatever enormous enemy fleet you are facing, however insurmountable the obstacles seem to be, pray the rosary. Go to Our Lady. She's small. I mean, whenever there's an apparition, you know, she's described as unbelievably beautiful and unbelievably tiny. Well, I, for an unrelated thing, looked up the average height of a man in that time and place, and it was only 5'5", five five, and women tend to be 2 to 6 inches shorter on average. So we're looking at somewhere around like 4'1", on average. <laughs> Probably. Or 5'1", I mean, sorry, 5'1". Yeah. So call, like 4'9", to... I'm going to call it 4'11". 4'11", <laughs> yeah. 4'11", yeah. 5'1", somewhere in there. Yeah, but she's small, but she's mighty. Has stepped on the head of many a serpent. Mm-hmm. So, oh, although technically, 
according to your story, mm -hmm. we just need to ask the little church ladies to pray the rosary for our intention. Well, just because they're the ones who are most likely to respond doesn't mean that it doesn't behoove all of us to pray our rosary more often. Yes, but if you are but a yes. little old lady, please keep on praying your rosary. Thank you. And, and, and if you wouldn't mind throwing one of those Hail Marys our way, we, we'd appreciate it. We, we will never refuse an Ave. I, exactly. I'm now going to put headcanon that the reason why we don't have the murder hornets is most of the older ladies I know don't like hornets, and therefore, Boom. you know, that's why they're gone. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, go down below and let us know what your favorite mystery of the rosary is. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. And remember, these feasts of the church, they don't just happen. There's always a fascinating story behind each and every one, involving adventure and excitement down through the centuries. So feel free to do some church history while you're at it. But as I said, go down below, comment about which one of the which one of the the twenty five twenty twenty mysteries that there are is your favorite. In Nathanism, there are twenty five. <laughs> you're darn right, there are. And that's just that's just that's just for the regular level Nathanists. <laughs> The, the the high level the the high level party members there's there's a whole thirty of them. Nathanism is deeply gnostic. <laughs> so subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be notified when the next plot is uploaded. Give this episode a like, pray your rosary, and until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love. My favorite are the luminous because they've been prayed the least, so they have the most prayer in them. <laughs> that is science. <laughs> Plus, it really makes the rad trads angry. <laughs> the Nathanist mysteries. <laughs>